Hi, my name is Miss Tracy with the Louisville Public Library to bring you our Tales and Tales Summer Reading Online Program. This year themed all around cryptids. Make sure you join us every single week for some fun cryptid adventures and do not forget to go on our website so you can register for the program. That way you have access to the online system to complete challenges and win those prizes. My name is Tracy with the Louisville Public Library to bring you this week's adult program for the Tales and Tales Summer Reading Online. We are going to go on a little adventure today to learn about Bigfoot. First of all, what is Bigfoot? It's a nickname for Sasquatch that came from a footprint cast taken in Del Norte County, California in 1958. Sasquatch is a term meaning wild man. It was first used by the indigenous peoples of the Pacific Northwest. Sasquatch is said to be a primate slash person hybrid covered in hair. Other names given to this creature here in the U.S. are the grass man and the skunk ape. show you a size comparison here you look and see most sasquatch sightings claim him to be over 10 feet tall your average alaskan brown bear hits about 10 foot humans all the way down there at six foot the average human or unless some of you are like me i'm closer to that four foot range so i definitely don't want to meet sasquatch um, and then your mountain gorilla hits around five foot average. There is also a lot of reports and famous creature known on the other side of the world called the Yeti. He is associated with Sasquatch, but they are two different entities. The Yeti prefers more Arctic climates. Sasquatch is normally in the warmer climates and the Yeti prefers to hang out around the Himalayan mountains. The Yeti is said to be more bear-like than primate featured, and he also goes by the name Abominable Snowman. Other names around the world, because the sightings do take place of these creatures all over the planet. In Argentina, they have what is known as the Neanderthal Man, Australia has sightings of the Yaoi, Mongolia has the Almas, Indonesia has the Orang Pendek, and China has the Yaren. And what do all of these have in common? They are all said to have humanoid characteristics along with an ape or bear-like appearance. So they're all said to be like a man, but covered all in hair. Some countries have sightings of a smaller creature, like three, maybe four feet tall. And then others, like here in the U.S., have around a 10-foot tall creature that people see. And then we'll get into the footprints. You'll see there your average brown bear footprint then the size of the big footprints that have been found. Uh, they average around 18 inches long. And then your average human size footprint, a size 11 shoe, which is a pretty good size footprint for a human. Uh, you see that compared to Bigfoot. That's a pretty big foot. <laughs> Here are some examples of footprints that have been found. 2016 in Arkansas, see the size of the footprint compared to the man's shoe. 2013 in Malaysia. 1951 in the Himalayas, and this was the first documented photograph of Yeti prints in the Himalayas. 
and see how long they go for. Yet he took a really long walk that day. 1924 near Mount St. Helens and they used a matchstick book to compare the size. And then you see also how the toes really curve around down the side of the foot. I don't think there's any way that could be a human footprint. I don't know, what do you think? Now, we're gonna take a look here about sightings of Bigfoot here in the US. First of all, here is a map uh, from a History Channel special. And the red dots, of course, mean where there has been Bigfoot sightings. You see mostly all over the country. Uh, the clusters there are the majority of the sightings, of course, in the Pacific Northwest. And then also the largest cluster on the Eastern US are here in Ohio. This newspaper article I found I thought was very interesting. Uh, it was just dated to be from the 1890s. I did not get a specific date. And it reads, because it is older, I don't know if you can read it, at Bald Rock, 60 miles from Fresno, John Rose killed a grizzly bear which had been roaming about that region for nearly, I believe that says 13 years and was called Bigfoot by the miners in the vicinity. It is estimated that he had killed 1,000 sheep in his time and has had many fights with Chinese sheep herders. He carried scars to show it, for when he was cut open, seven bullets were found in his carcass. They had been fired into him in the past years. He was killed in a canyon and could not get out but those who saw him estimated his weight at 2,000 pounds. His hide was a good load for two men to carry out. And this was from the San Francisco Chronicle. So in the 1890s, it sounds like there was a sighting. They stated it was a grizzly bear, but the nickname was Bigfoot. Now here, I would love to show you the video recording. This is the original video recording from 1967, filmed in Northern California. It was the very first video evidence ever of a Bigfoot sighting. It is known as the Patterson Gimlin film, and it's a very famous film. If you would like to see more about it or read more about it, just search Patterson Gimlin. Bigfoot film on the internet and you're going to find all kinds of awesome information. So let's take a look. This film has been the center of controversy for many years. Uh, you take a look and come up with your own opinion. Do you think it is a fake? Do you think it could be something else? Or did they actually find Sasquatch? Now this footage here was just filmed last year, February of 2020, right here in Ohio in Salt Fork State Park. Uh, the full length video of this is on YouTube. The gentleman that filmed it did a fabulous job. It's a very long video, so I've just pulled a few clips to show you, but I highly recommend searching Salt Fork Ohio Grassman on YouTube to see the full-length video. Now listen. this footage they did use a drone to try to get some better images and there are two black like entities walking through the woods and here they got some close-up footage
Now we'll go on to some other research I found online. The sightings of Bigfoot around the U.S. have been going on for a long time and is so well known and sparked such interest that the FBI even did an investigation in 1976. Here's a copy of an actual document regarding that investigation. Uh, the Bigfoot Information Center and Exhibition had sent hair samples to the assistant director of the FBI laboratory division for examination. And altogether, there was about 27 documents regarding this uh, research. It did take the FBI quite some time to get a response back to the Bigfoot Information Center. Um, I'm not sure if it was due to uh, struggles they had with the sampling the hair samples or if it was just that it was a government agency taking their normal length of time to do things. So, uh, but just so you know, the FBI did come back with that the hair samples were in the deer family. I don't know if it was just due to the hair samples sitting for so long, because the investigation went on for about seven years. So it might have been contaminated or deteriorated hair samples, or maybe it just was someone got some hair samples off of a tree branch and it did happen to belong to a deer. We do not know. But I thought it was very interesting that the FBI actually entertain the idea to investigate Bigfoot. Then in 1999, the Bigfoot Field Manual was published by seven different federal agencies. So again, government agencies are actually taking their time to investigate and look into the Bigfoot phenomenon. Um, this document is like 120 pages long. Uh, I have not read through the whole thing yet, but what I have read so far, it is very interesting. And later on in this slideshow, I am going to show you where you can find these documents and download them yourself. They're totally free to the public to find. You're not going to have like men in black knocking on your door for getting them. <laughs> they are free and public record. Now, we have went through and seen some video footage. We've seen footprint cast. Um, we've learned that there are sightings all over the world of different creatures of the same description. And also, our government is actually taking their time and taxpayer dollars to investigate this. So they must deem it as a creditable sighting and something worth investigating and looking into. Do you believe in Bigfoot or Sasquatch? Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. I had a lot of fun researching for this presentation. I hope you enjoyed watching it and join us next week for more cryptid adventures. Okay, we learned so much about Bigfoot and the other breeds of Sasquatches all over the planet. Now to give you some other helpful information, this week for the summer reading program, you'll want to swing by the library to pick up that grab bag. Inside the grab bag is a special surprise for you, your very own foot cast refrigerator magnet. So you always have a Bigfoot cast hanging around the house. Also in the bag, you will find your incentive sheet for the week telling you to complete your challenges, which are checking out 15 books, five movies, reading 100 pages, and something you've already completed watching this video. So get your grab bag, get your fridge magnet, complete your challenges, and work your way towards those prizes. Thank you for joining us for another amazing cryptid video. Remember, the program runs from June 7th until August 6th. You can jump in and join the hunt at any time. 
And also, remember to stop by the library and pick up grab bags every single week. The grab bags contain crafts, craft supplies, and really cool, fun gifts just for you. Join us next week for more cryptid hunting. Mask up and stay safe.